Hi, Garden Rebels. I just yesterday had a prideful moment. I'm not proud of it. Not proud of my prideful moment. Let me explain. I had two separate customers come in. They're great customers, Peter and Bobby. Two different times of the day, they came in and they were shopping just like a regular person would be shopping. And they mentioned, oh, hi, John. And they said, um, yeah, your place looks very much like mine. And I didn't quite understand what they meant. Um, I said, oh, really? And I says, yeah, there's just a, I see you've got a lot of burn too from the high, from the high heat. And I just, we're taking great pride on trying to make sure everything got watered during that high heat. But, you know, it kind of just gritted at me. Just, I, I don't know if it's my competitive spirit or what have you, because I want to make sure everything looks just fabulous. But um, when I took on their viewpoint, I started noticing things that weren't so wonderful. Some curled leaves, some burned blooms, it's just some sun-scorched plants and some really sun-scorched plants. When I was editing the video the other day, I even saw these two baskets, these two sad looking baskets in the background that I hope nobody would have noticed. I'm most sure they noticed. So in other words, being a gardener always brings you back. It always brings you back to a nice, real, humble state. And I wanna show you some, uh, if you get that same burn, it happens to, <clears throat> to the best of us. And I want to show you some things that you can do to alleviate that look that you might have for the rest of the summer. For instance, on this Japanese maple, this is a autumn moon maple, by the way. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous chartreuse yellow Japanese maple, and they're really hard to find. I take great pride in this one because I even put our hummingbird feeders on this one. So it's a lot of, gives me a lot of great joy, this tree does. But with this burn, it reminds me of my failings every day. Actually, it's just, there's just a, that intensive sun. So even with a lot of water, perhaps, it just could not transpire enough water through it. This particular one though, I think it's because of my watering. But anyway, I am going to strip the leaves off this. Let me give you a better look, um, better look on this and show you exactly what I mean. Let's get real. We have some real damage and there, it, and there is no reason we need to kick ourselves and feel guilty, guilty all through the season. There are some things that we can we can maybe change the course for the better. So on a Japanese maple, if you have burn like this and the tree is still well alive, what we can do is literally go through and strip these leaves. We still have time, by the way, um, in the season where this tree could leaf out. So we're gonna strip these leaves, literally just pull them right off. I'm just literally grabbing my hand and just pulling them off. I can pluck them as well, so, but stripping them is a good term, so. By the way, I do have to thank uh, Peter.
Peter. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Bobby, for breaking that. do have signs of burn. We have signs of burn all over the nursery, in fact. Even that guy over there. The formiums, by the way, so we're gonna strip this, all the leaves off of this guy, all of the burned leaves. And hopefully we still have time, we'll still have time. This is just beginning of July, uh, that we can get this to be a, a beautiful, beautifully leafed tree. So there is hope. Now on formiums, it might be a little bit tougher call on this. Formiums, when they dry up, they curl those leaves. And um, so what we could do, I usually do is take that entire leaf stalk back. So we'll pluck that back all the way down. And so all of these tips, now some folks will like to do this instead. Instead, they'll take a tip. If you have just the very tip, it is very possible to cut that. Usually I use a sharp scissors and not a, um, a sharp scissors or a really sharp tool. There are some formiums where it's so much that it's probably not going to make it. So this one here, it's going to be a patience question. Do you have enough patience? If I trim all of this back, what is left? Do I have that patience to see it through all the way? And it's quite a right to say, I don't have that patience. I don't have that patience. I don't have that kind of reserve. And that way that will take that, take it out and put something else there instead. And of course, there are some folks who are much more patient. Formiums is a tough call because in our area, yes, they love our sun uh, during the summertime when we have it, and they love our they love the heat when it comes to town, but it's a short season, and so they grow much less, they grow slowly here rather than quick. Again, on burned foliage, you can just literally pluck them right off. I must warn you, cleaning plants can be quite addictive. It feels really good to, to just to go through, pluck off all the old foliage, anything burned. to look better immediately. I have to say there's kind of a feeling of renewal that I kind of get a kick out of. And trust me when I understand, some things can be very heartbreaking. This isn't going to make it. This juniper we've had for, for many years. It's been in our inspiration garden and We've had it in a lot of different parts of the nursery, just again, as inspiration. I remember Aurelio, before he passed away, uh, would be trimming. He, he was such an excellent trimmer. And since he passed away, you can see I've been a little bit lax on the trimming, but I just remember him trimming. It was just, I miss him uh, dearly. I miss him dearly. 
and seeing this juniper die is just as heartbreaking. We just didn't get enough water to it. I suppose it's the circle of life. Here we are doubling up our watering system so that if we get that kind of heat again, now I know it's, good, it's a supposedly once in a long while type of heat, but if we get that again, I want to be ultimately prepared. you know when you're out trimming back those burned leaves maybe pulling out a dead plant that served you well it's also a moment perhaps to notice other changes in the garden too for the summertime this is a clematis armandi this is early sensation and it has those white blooms early springtime and then just turns into this wonderful, exotic, almost hairy, furry, um, amazing constellation of blooms. I just find that intriguing. But it's also a time to appreciate as well things that did well through the heat. Uh, things that did survive and maybe perhaps even thrive. And it's good to take note. Look at this one here. This is a uh, echinacea. This one is called Supreme Cantaloupe. I just love that name on that. Makes my mouth water. Or this one right here. This one's called, uh, it's a Butalua. It is called Blonde Ambition. And take a look at that almost horizontal blooms on there on this particular type of grass. Just if you want an exotic grass, again, uh, took that heat really well and starts to bloom because of it. So I guess that's the message for today. Yes, we may have failed some plants during this high heat. It was tough on all of us. And there is hope that we can still pluck off some leaves, cut things back, and get them to regrow. And yes, sometimes it's just done and over with. Uh, but on the same hand, there are some plants that are doing really well. So let's keep it in equal measure. Uh, we can say goodbye to some and well done on others, just so we don't beat ourselves up too much. Anyway, guys, that's the show for the day. Always live your passion. Let's just hope that next heat wave, we've got gotcha. you. We've got gotcha. you.